Okay, so the Gauss-Jordan method of solving a system of equations, which have many, many variables, many, many equations, it's a great systematic way of actually finding solutions. Let's take a look at three equations, three unknown, an example, and see if we can actually do this for ourselves. So here are the three equations. So x plus y plus 2z equals negative 1, x plus 3y minus 6z equals 7, and 2x minus y plus 2z equals 0. Now we're going to follow the same systematic approach that is given by the Gauss-Jordan method. That's the idea. So uh, the first thing we want to do is create this augmented matrix. The augmented matrix is just given to us by literally considering the coefficients and writing them in the appropriate spots, the x's, the y's, and the z's, and then we augment the constants here on the far right. So we'd see, for example, reading down 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, negative 1, 2, negative 6, 2, negative 1, 7, 0. And voila, like a cooking show, I've done this in advance, and there it is. So this is our augmented matrix. Remember, augmented meaning that I've augmented the constants. So in fact, the variables and the addition all gone away. We understand this is the x um, column, this is the y column, and this is the z column. And that's it. And these are the constants. Great. So in fact, this has now served its purpose. We can go here. What's our goal? Our goal is to massage this matrix using the method of Gauss-Jordan and convert it into an equivalent matrix that would look like this. Now, why is that good? Well, this is great because, you see, this tells me that 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z equals a. So namely, x equals a. That's what I get out of here. And then similarly here, I'd see that 0 times x plus 1 times y plus 0 times z equals b, namely y equals b, and similarly z equals c. So if I can transform this matrix into a form of this kind, then in fact I could just literally read off the answers. And what are the rules? The rules are that I can multiply a matrix by a number and add it to another matrix and put it in its stead, and so forth. And that's the idea. So let's see if we can shoot to this. That's the goal. All right, let's roll up our sleeves. OK, enough dilly-dallying. Let's begin. So the first thing I want to do, if you recall, is to make this a 0 and make this a 0. So I just have 1, 0, 0. So how do I do that? Well, in this case, what I want to do, let's see how I'm going to do this. Do you have any ideas? I don't. What I want to do is I'm going to multiply this column, this row rather, by negative 1, and then I'm going to add it to this row. Now, why is that a good idea? If I multiply this, r1, let's call it, by negative 1, and then add it to this, then I'd see um, negative 1 and 1 is 0. And that's all I'm shooting for here is to get a 0. And then I'll do whatever else follows suit in order to make this kind of go. So this is going to be transformed into a new augmented matrix that's equivalent but different. I'm going to keep the top row as it is. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take this row and add it to negative 1 times this row. So this minus this is 0. Now I just have to follow along and put in whatever else I need to put in. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And negative 6 minus, uh, minus, uh, minus, uh, minus 2 is uh, negative 8. I'm sorry, uh, now, uh, yeah, ne it's negative 8. Hmm. Everyone happy? And then uh, 7 minus negative 1 is going to be 7 plus 1, which is 8. Great. OK, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. And then you're happy, too. OK, now what we want to do is we want to actually produce a 0 here. So how are we going to produce a 0 here? What we're going to do is we're going to take this row and now multiply by 2, in fact, negative 2. So we multiply this by negative 2, and then we add it to this. Because if I multiply this by negative 2, that makes this a negative 2, and 2 would be 0. And remember, the goal is to get a 0 here. So multiply this by negative 2. So I get a 0 here. Then this is negative 2, so I have negative 3, and negative 2 is negative, I'm sorry, negative 1, and negative 2 is negative 3. I'm getting ahead of myself. And then here I see a 2, and then I'm subtracting. 2 times 2, which is 4, so 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. And here I see a 0 times, uh, 0 minus a negative 2 times negative 1, which is just a 2. And so I get this. So in the first move, notice I've done exactly what I wanted, namely I got zeros below this 1. That's great. 
Now, what would I like to do? What I'd like to do now is I'd like to get a zero below this two. So this now is, is done for the moment. And now we're gonna try and see if we can do more magic. So how am I going to get to the next equivalent augmented matrix? Well, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna make this zero. So I should multiply this by something, and what should I multiply it by? Well, it seems like three halves. Because if I multiply this by three halves, then this would actually just become a three, and when I add it to negative three, I get zero. So in fact, I'm not gonna do anything here, but I'm gonna multiply everything there by three halves. So um, if I multiply this by three halves, I get zero, and when I add it to this, I get zero, which of course should always be the case. We shouldn't undo all the great work we've been doing. Multiply this by three halves, that just gives me a three. When I add this negative three, I get zero. Multiply this by three halves, so that's actually gonna be negative four times three. Negative four times three is negative 12, and then I add to uh, add negative two, I get negative 14. And then I multiply this by three halves, I multiply this by three halves, and I just get 12, and I add 12 to, uh, to two, and I get 14. So there I have it, so that's where I am now. And notice that now it's a triangular matrix. Phew. Still with me? <laughs> well, I hope so, I'm barely with me. So here we go. Now, we can actually simplify in this case, and I'm gonna actually elect to do that since you know, there's so many numbers running around here. Because notice I could take this equation and actually um, divide it by uh, two. So if I take this equation and divide it by two, then what happens? Then I get a zero here, and then here I get a one, and then here I get a negative four, and here I get a four. So I already get a one here, which is absolutely awesome. Now, what would I do here? Actually, if I divide that by negative 14, I would see zero. Zero divided by negative 14 is zero. Zero divided by negative 14 is still zero. Um, negative 14 divided by negative 14 is one, and 14 divided by negative 14 is negative one. So I get um, a, a, an augmented matrix that looks like this, which is still equivalent to the old one. So this is great. I actually am making progress because now I've got ones along the diagonal. What do I have to do? I hope to get zeros up on top. So how am I gonna get zeros up on top? Okay, well now we've got a Take a look at what we can do. Well, now we use the bottom, the bottom rows in order to get the zero. So for example, what I should do here is take um, uh, this row and subtract this row. So take row one and then add negative one times row two because that will give me a one minus one, which is zero. So if I take this and subtract that, I get one. If I take this and subtract that, I get zero. If I take this and subtract that, that's gonna be actually two minus negative four, which is gonna be a six. And if I take this and subtract that, I'm gonna get negative five. Augmented, negative five. So there, so now I've got a zero there, which is awesome. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll keep everything else here just for the moment, because I wanna take this in steps so you can really see everything unfolding. This is an equivalent system to this matrix. Okay, now what do I want? Well, now what I wanna do is I wanna get, make these things zero. I'm getting close, I'm getting close. Here we go. Now this is gonna be a little tricky. Let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, how do I make that zero? Well, I shouldn't use this thing here because then I'll get this one knotted up in here and I'll lose that zero. So I gotta go here. This means that I won't change anything in the first two and now I'm gonna deal with this. How? I'll multiply this by negative six and then I'll add it to row one. So I'm gonna take row one plus negative six times row three and put that in the new row one. So I'm gonna basically do this. I'm gonna take this minus six times that. This minus six times that is just one. This minus six times that is zero. This minus six times this is happily zero, which was the whole point. This minus six times this, that's gonna be negative five um, minus uh, negative one times six, which is gonna be six, so negative five plus six is one. Okay. 
Now, I'm actually going to do the, the other step as well. I'm going to make this a 0 at the same moment. What do I do? Well, here, to make that a 0, I should multiply this by 4 and just add it to this. So th the operation I'm going to do here is to replace row 2 by row 2 plus 4 times row 3. And when I do that, what do I see? So I'm going to multiply this by 4 and add. So 0 plus 0 times 4 is a 0. 1 plus 0 times 4 is still 1. Negative 4 plus uh, 4 times 1 is 4 minus 4, which is 0. Great. And then I have 4 minus uh, a 1 times 4, which would be 4 minus 4, which is 0. OK. And the last one is all set. Look at us. Wow, I think I survived this. Did you? And I get to this augmented matrix. Now notice this is exactly, exactly of the form we desire. Because now we can just read off the answer. We could say, this tells me, remember this was the x. Remember way back long ago, in olden days, we had this equation. So the first, the first column are the x's. So x equals 1, y equals 0, and z equals negative 1. Well, now after all of that arithmetic, and knowing how bad I am at actually computing things, you might say, is this correct? Well, let's actually check our answer. So we can check our answer really easily by inserting this value for x, 1, and y, 0, and z, negative 1, and see if we get the same answers. And we have to, by the way, check it for each and every one of the three original equations. So in place of x will be 1, in place of y we'll have 0, and in place of z we'll have negative 1. Let's go. First equation, I see 1 plus 0 minus 2. Well, that's 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Great. Next, I see 1 plus 0 minus 6 times negative 1. That's plus 6. So I have plus 6 plus 0 plus 1. That's 7. And finally, big finish, let's have a drum roll. Thank you. I have 2 times 1 minus 0 plus 2 times negative 1. So that's 2 minus 0 minus 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0. Yes. Wow, I did this flawlessly, which by the way, uh, good for me. Good for me. The point is that you can do it as well as long as we're careful. If you have a very, very large system, in fact, computers will actually be able to do this with great ease. But it's wonderful to see for ourselves that we can start with an augmented matrix, and then after a little bit of toiling and just using some basic arithmetic, but using the power of the gauss jordan method, we can actually resolve and find x, y, and z for ourselves on the deserted island on that beach in the sun. Congratulations. I'll see you soon.